608. Um, before we actually um, approve the agenda, I would like to take a moment um, to... Recording in progress. Thank you. Um, I would like to take a moment to, uh, for all of us to take a moment of silence as the RNESU has lost our principal at Barstow, David... St. Germain. St. Germain. Thank you. I knew it was St. something. Um, so David St. Germain passed away over the weekend, and I would just like um, this board to take a moment of silence because he is part of the RNESU community. So if we could just do that for a few minutes. Okay, so first order of business is to approve an agenda. Can I get someone to make a motion, please? We approve this week's agenda. This meeting's agenda. Thank you, Barbara. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you, Fernanda. Um, all of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, we have an agenda. Next um, point of order is communications with parents, citizens, and staff. I don't believe anybody is here to speak with us tonight. Um, and I don't believe we've had anything uh, via Let's Talk. So we will move on. Consent agenda. Anyone want to make a motion? Oh, I move we accept the consent agenda. Okay, is there a second? Nice. Second. Second. Thanks, Natalie. Okay, all of those in favor of the cons uh, Can we discuss real quick? Because I had a question about it. There's, there was an approval of the... Um, so if you want to pull something off, we got to pull it off. We'll pull it off and then you can talk about it. Oh, okay. What do you want to pull it off? It was about the... Uh, Policies? Oh, it was a pol yeah, it was a policy on... Um, Class size? No, that the uh, okay command. 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 So why don't we just pull the we'll pull those off. Um, Can I ask a question about personnel changes? Sure. So we'll pull off personnel changes and we'll pull off policies. Okay. So do you mind? Uh, um, That's fine. Okay. Yes. So we're uh, changing the motion to be everything but those two things. So everyone. Um, in favor of the consent agenda without the policies and without the personnel changes, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, let's start with personnel changes because that's first. So, do you want to make a motion first and then you can ask your question? The, the motion would be to approve the personnel changes. I approve the personnel okay. changes. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Devin. Question. I'm just curious on when they're leaving. <coughs> it says exiting, but no exit date. Oh, sure. Usually it means your end of year or they're leaving immediately. But um, Kristen, do you want to speak to that? So the their end of the year resignations. They're through June 30. Okay. 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 Great. Oh. <laughs> so you might want to know. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. All of those in favor of the personnel changes, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Okay, personnel changes passes. Um, we will take the policies one at a time. It's just easier. Um, so the first one I think is the chain of command. So if someone wants to make a motion to approve. I would make a motion to approve the chain of command. Okay, is there a second? Second. Uh, I will take Natalie this time. Okay, and your question, question I have is it's also further down in the in the superintendent's um, information packet. Was it something I missed at the last meeting? I didn't have a chance to read the minutes. We've already gone through it and like it enough to approve it um, without discussion any further. Actually, no, this is a new policy that RNESU brought forward, so this is the first time that we're actually looking at it. 
So if you have questions, this is the time to add. You will look at it one more time before it actually gets approved. Okay, so we're not really approving it. We're just actually that's it. not true. RNESU has seen it once already. They've sent it out to you to look it over. Right. Then you will send it back to RNESU with any changes you want. So tonight's the night. Okay. So I guess my question was, it's on the consent agenda, and I'm assuming when we approve the consent agenda, we also are approving approving the this policy. Would that be correct? Well, why is it on here again? Sorry. One second here. It's on the consent agenda. I don't see it. Sorry. One second. There's a consent agenda. There's a monitoring report. Faculty, staff, board of... Is it under the superintendent's... Um, I want to say it was under the superintendent documents, yeah. So it's probably part of her informational yeah. report. So that's just her telling us that that's something that's come up, but... <coughs> Usually we don't do any action on the superintendent's informational report. That's just inf incidental information. And I don't see it anywhere else here. I have it. It's for adoption, new policy, RNSU, first reading, 12-21-2022. Well, that's when, the, that's when the RNESU saw it first. Oh, it. Yeah. And, and this oh, is something that we have to even approve is over? Mm -hmm, yes, because you're part of RNESU. I guess I'm still confused. If we approve my motion, mm -hmm. then we're approving this to be. Then you're approving this to tell our NESU that you're okay with it. And this is the last time we read it. Oh, well, you'll, you'll see it once a year, but yes, that's true. At least for a while. The only thing that I noticed briefly when I read it was under it. Uh, <coughs> folks that are, to adhere to it, are. Employees, volunteers, I want to say coaches, I can't find it at this moment. I was wondering if the board should be part of that, or are we volunteers or employees? So, as far as the chain of command is concerned, we would not be part of the chain of command for staff. No, it wasn't that. It was the, oh. the people that have to adhere to this are oh. okay. employees, volunteers. I guess I can't find it right now, but I want to say it was coaches. Well, according to what I read, the the board is sort of the end of the line in the chain of command in a hierarchical way. I understand that, and I'm not talking about and the chain of command. I'm, I'm talking about who has to adhere to it. The board obviously has to adhere to this chain of command, but they're not in, um, they're not we specifically, don't they're not specifically uh, noted in that line. It says employees, all employees. employees. So is that us? Are we employees? We're not employees. No. And, volunteers? and we don't have we don't have interaction on that level yeah well and i think that's true but um kristen has her hand up so i'm gonna let her speak to it yeah um thank you um and Deborah, that's a that's a great question um this this policy was meant to be far more internally facing it's just really important to the sustainability of our organization and really the functioning of our organization um that we make sure that folks who work for us, um, whether in a formal under contract or a volunteer, a student teacher, um, an outside vendor, uh, that they're very clear of the chain of command. So for instance, if I'm a student teacher and I'm um, having trouble accessing my internet, I don't necessarily email the director of technology. So it's more to make sure that it, you know, we, we know that we have staff that rolls in not just in August in service, they roll in throughout the school year. Same thing happens to volunteers and employees. So it's just kind of there to provide structure and organization to the SU for how, and the, the member districts within it, um, and for how we work with one another. Um, this, this isn't necessarily applicable, um, as applicable in terms of the policy to school board, parents, community members, agency of ed, um, folks like that who might reach out. Okay. Right, because we, we want you folks to be able to reach out, use Let's Talk, um, and then if someone had a problem about a teacher um, and they brought it to me, I would just say, hey, you need to go to the teacher, you need to go to the principal. Um, but it would be wrong of us, I think, to dictate to the public and the community, you must follow our chain of command policy. Um, that, that's for our internal work and our structure. 
Great, thank you. That's a great answer on that one. And then you, you also have exceptions, chain of command. Procedures are uh, inapplicable to EEO, HHB, and Title IX complaints. Yeah. Who is EEO and HHB? Equal opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So um, another, another, another wonderful question. So what that's doing is um, putting special emphasis on times when staff might need to go directly to someone for support that jumps out of the chain of command. So an example would be um, HHB, hazing, harassment, and bullying. So if I'm a teacher and I'm really struggling with something, um, I don't necessarily have to go to my principal, I can go directly to my HHB coordinator. If I'm a paraprofessional and I feel like I've been harassed, I can jump over my teacher my special educator, my principal, and reach out directly to Marsha Bruce, who's our Title IX coordinator for the district. The, the biggest reason for those exceptions are that it's legal, right? It's a legal requirement that we allow that, that it's confidential, and that those are things that trigger a higher level of response. So usually those are times when they need a central office administrator and they don't have to wait to get permission from all of those people to get it. Thank you. And this is just for, this really is for employees and vendors and so forth. I just wonder if that should be spelled out, equal opportunity employer and hazing harassment and I forgot to be. Bullying. 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 We do all employees and, and um, vendors understand what those acronyms are? Because I didn't. So that's, that was my only comment about it is oh. if it's spelled out better. It, people understand it sure especially vendors okay and I was actually going to ask if we could in in writing these policies and revising them do that for each policy if there's an acronym that we actually spell it out once so that yeah. before and then use the abbreviation after that so that any time someone's looking at a policy they know what exactly. yeah I mean that's kind of standard practice right if you're I reading so. like a newspaper article and there's an abbreviation usually they write it out and then they abbreviate it and we run in there's so many acronyms <laughs> in education we're just constantly running up against them and so why not yeah why not spell it out okay so you are asking um, to amend your motion to approve it with spelling the spelling out of all acronyms yes at least once Yes, first time. Okay, and who seconded it? Oh, no. Who did? Oh, Natalie did. Natalie, initials. are you okay with that? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, um, any other discussion regarding this policy? Okay. So, all of those in favor of approving GCOC, which is the RNESU <laughs> staff change of command, um, with the uh, changes to spelling out all acronyms. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Perfect. And our last policy tonight is um, class size, um, the class size policy, policy CE. If someone wants to make a motion. Move to approve. Okay. Devin, and a second? Second. Barbara? Actually, I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, this that, is the time. The second sentence under policy. The boards recognize that a school size may become too small to provide a quality education at a cost the community can bear or cannot bear. Or the policy, oh, I never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, I love it when you answer your own <laughs> question, question in the middle. That's great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other questions regarding policy, class size policy? Devin? Uh, what kind of, is it BEAR? B -E -A -R? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. Okay. All right. All right, then. Um, if there's no other discussion, all of those in favor of um, policy CE class size, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you for the consent agenda. We're going to move on um, to the monitoring report 2.3 that Kristen has provided in your packet. It is policy something or other. Financial conditions and activities. So at this point, I would um, like a motion for someone to accept her monitoring report, and then we can discuss anything that you saw 
in it that you feel we need to discuss. I I'd make a motion to accept it. Thanks, Devin. I'll second that. Barbara seconding. Okay. Discussion. This is a policy we have seen before, but this is the first time that Kristen has um, done the monitoring report for us. Basically, what this is saying is that she is complying with, all of, with this policy. That's correct. Yep. And she's giving evidence to provide it, and she's also giving a reasonable interpretation as to what the policy is saying. And this would be an opportunity for us to say, oh, I don't believe you're actually doing that. Can you show me how you're really doing it? Yeah. Or it would be, a, uh, you know, I don't like your interpretation. Interpret interpretation. You know, we need to shore it up. You know, this is where you would write. You're welcome. Do you have any of those? I do not. Oh, okay. Just trying to understand. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Is there any discussion? I did not see any points where she was out of compliance. So, okay. Hearing none. All of those in favor of accepting policy 2.3, um, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Sorry, I keep losing my agenda. All right, moving on. Um, this is the meat and potatoes of our meeting. Um, first of all, we are going to discuss the annual meeting presentation and communication plan. Um, most, all of you actually should have received the little postcard in the mail that said how to get a ballot and when polling places are open. Did everybody get that in the mail? Came last week. Um, I did have one person ask me if that was the way we were sending out our annual report and if or if that was our way of saying um, that's all we were giving them and if that was legal and I said no annual reports at the br printer so um, that should be coming out shortly for everybody um, oh in that in your packet is the OVU budget flyer I think you guys should all look at that because that is what we're going to be sending to everybody so if there's things you want to add or you don't like something, now is the time to talk about it. Yes. Yep. Is this color? Mm-hmm. Yep, it'll go out just like you see it. Or um, Barbara has the color <laughs> one. I just wonder if we should highlight. We are not allowed to mail your school ballots. You must take one of the actions. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that actually, and that was on I the like postcard too, at least yeah. for Brandon. So Brandon is the only town this year that is mailing their um, municipal ballot. So everybody else is going to have to get their ballot by, going, by one of the three options. It's only Brandon that we need to worry about hmm. not getting the school ballot since their other ballot will come via mail. That's our largest population, though. Um, pretty close. Yeah, Pittsburgh is not quite as quite as large as Brandon. Or you could put it down below on the next portion of the flyer. It says, please vote early, uh, early vote by mail, mm -hmm. or at the town office, or at the polling. Um, yeah, I was thinking that something should be said about you have to request a ballot. So we could put that in there and, and specifically say Brandon voters again, or do you want it to just say that you need to request a ballot? I would say by mail, and then you say request an absent. Okay. Right? Something about, oh, it does say it. Request it does say it. from clerk. Okay. Um, Just adver advertising wise, that's super small. And then the big text is at the bottom of the next page, which is early vote, early voting by mail. So you see my point is mm -hmm. that either you highlight what Natalie was talking about, yep. or you put it with the big text. So do you want to bold it? Is that what you would like to do or have it in a, sp a different color? The Brandon voters? Yeah. The Brandon. Highlight like a, yellow. Like a, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yellow. Highlight it yellow? I okay. Yeah. Alright. So we will make that change. We'll ask Melinda to make that change. Is there, because um, we are doing this one in-house as well. So we're not sending it out to a printer. 
Um, is there anything else that you can see that talks about our budget, talks about... We tried to get the highlights of the budget so that people understand. Um, is there any way to make the print smaller on that one section? That is so small you can't read anyway. Oh, you mean... <laughs> <laughs> We just wanted right? to see if you're going to start right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That was it. That's, that's okay. Cool. And I was just wondering if there's a way to make this Brandon voters thing slightly larger by squinching up the space above it. I mean, it's like, you know, like to make this, the Brandon voters part down at the bottom. I was wondering if there's a way to make it bigger and highlight it. I don't. Well, so fold it in half and see if you have any extra room. No, no, I don't mean oh, this whole box. I mean, like, you know, bump this up a couple ticks, bump this up a couple ticks, and then use that extra space to make that slightly larger. Okay. I mean, it's fine tuning, but. All right. But, you know, it's like a, um, you know, graphic design, what makes things pop. Sure. Highlighting, bolding, larger print. All don't right. return, so. use like space after of six or something. Like that. Okay. Yep. Anything else? See, this is where we get to micromanage. <laughs> well, this is the information you're putting out to your public, so you should have yeah. some well, o oversight yeah. over that. Making sure that we get the right, and it needs to go out now before people vote yeah. without mm -hmm. actually seeing anything. So. You know what you could do is reduce all the Zoom. Yeah, you can get rid of all that. You can just have Zoom meeting the link Median ID, oh, passcode, yeah. and you can put one phone number. You don't need ten different phone numbers. Yeah, you don't need the whole You only need one. That's a good point. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. and then you can. Can I borrow your pad of paper? Now they're getting <laughs> pecky on me. <laughs> I could do the highlight in yellow, I mean, and I could. Like two inch <laughs> and larger two print. Inch yeah. <laughs> I, th I think what Linda's thinking with that part, um, Lori and folks, yeah. was that it's the official ballot. It's what it will look like. So it's basically cut and pasted so folks um, see what the warning is. That's that's what they'll get when they vote. Okay. But I, you, you all can do whatever you want with it, but that that's... She, she played with the text for days and days, but that's why it is the way it is uh, for that section, because that's what the warning is. For the Zoom part we, of it? We, the Zoom part. The Zoom part. Part. Yeah. For that whole section where Deb can make it any smaller, um, that whole section is basically the cut and paste it. That's, that's the ballot. That's what folks are going to okay. see. Um, we also just need to know so people don't get two sets of things at once. This is a flyer that's separate from the postcard, the, the timing of um, when you like this to go out as well. So do we know when the annual report is planning to be, is coming from the printer to directly to the towns? Assume it's at the printer right now. Okay. Because I don't want both of the things to come at the same, I don't think we want both things to come at the same time. And I think the annual report needs to go into people's hands first. Yep. Would I be right about that? So what we could do is once we know that the it's come that it's um, been disseminated is maybe the following week it go out. Is is that okay with everyone? That makes sense. Just so that you know we don't want the cart before the horse, or I me to get another email from Dr. Mathis saying is this legal? Mm -hmm. Your annual report. <laughs> <laughs> anonymous, <Yep. laughs> anonymous well, yeah. citizen. <laughs> That's a, yeah. So I have a, I have another spacing question. Okay, is this going to be folded like this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we have a slight problem in that this box is lapping over the fold, and this is the box we're trying to draw attention to. So again, it's like maybe you need to put arrows on a, on your well, maybe the way it. you printed it, uh, her it could printer be. Be, could be different. But I, I guarantee you that that's the way it's supposed to be. Is 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 above the? It'll okay, be above the it's fold. going to be above the fold. Yeah, because there's some so space. your margins I'll, might be I'll different. Just say that we use this flyer. The next bullet on the agenda is faculty staff meetings. We started our faculty staff meetings already. Um, Otter Creek has had theirs, and we use this flyer to bring to staff. Um, as a conversation and also a point of information for them to have. And when it's folded, it does 
somehow line okay. up perfectly. It works. All right. But it, probably it, only Melinda can fold it right. perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Melinda can do all. So, okay. So, I'm asking her to highlight in yellow the thing about the Brandon people needing to um, ask for a ballot. Um, you would like the text box to be smaller still? Or the, the wording inside, you know, the... Bigger. Bigger, bigger right. Bigger, but you want so the spacing smaller and the wording bigger on the bottom. Right. Uh, okay. Maybe um, close up a little bit of the white space in between yeah. the blocks of text to allow that bottom section that says Brandon Voters to be slightly larger font, like a one or two points larger. Okay. You know. We'll see what she can do. And then, so are we changing the Zoom stuff or are we leaving it alone because it is directly from the warning? Well, the warning itself mm -hmm. is, has yep. the zoom. Okay. Yeah, text on the warning. Okay. Yeah. I think we should leave it as the warning. I, don't know. I know. I know it's a lot of numbers, but honestly, it does come directly from the warning. I'm just asking. You want to leave it? I think we have to, probably. Okay. You know, the but the space people. at the bottom isn't going to help the fact that the margins are as tight as they are. So I don't think you can actually right. move the text to a bigger size if you take you mean, the Are you talking about this or are you talking about the, this? The, the this part? Back. No, oh, this. That, little, this part little, here? Little part. No, little, no, little, little part. part. That, oh, yeah. That. that part. Even if you take out two lines see, of the yeah. Zoom meeting, well, you're not going to gain any room yeah. <laughs> because of the margins on the side. You know, we'll hear from people saying, I couldn't read that. Yeah. 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 Right. We'll put it on Facebook and, and make it big. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I do have a question now that I'm looking yeah. at this. Why not put the voter uh, options next to? Why is it stacked on top of each other? You know what I'm saying? That's oh, for an address. address. Yeah. Just for mind. the address. Thank you. Okay. Let's nice answer my question. No, I like the. Uh, We're doing that a lot tonight. This is really nice. <laughs> it's All right. Have to say out loud. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just wait. I know, right? Any other questions about the flyer? Okay, so we're going to make sure that the um, annual report goes out first, which is currently at the printer, and then this will go out the following week, so that it will. So it should be back to back. Okay. All right. Awesome. That is good news. All right, the next piece of that puzzle, um, did you want to talk about the staff meeting part of it, or you've already pretty much done that, um, um, Kristen? I mean, I think I've pretty much done it, except to say um, it's uh, Marsha, Brenda, myself, and Tyler, um, and the, uh, you know, the OCA staff, OB is next week. I think Nash, OB, Lothrop are both next week. Nash we might be next week as well, or the following week. Um, so far, we've gotten some great ideas about um, how to get the word out to parents and the community. There's been some good brainstorming around that. Um, and as we've mentioned before, we have an awful lot of staff members that are residents. They are voters. And a lot of even our staff don't necessarily understand the decisions, um, the values behind the budget. Um, and kind of the intricacies of, of tons of them didn't understand um, inflation, common level appraisal, equalized pupil, a lot of the things that we talked about the previous board members or the board meeting that was confusing for our voters was also very confusing to our staff who we have assumed, you know, knew as much as, as we did. So that's been really helpful um, and we will continue to do those and then take the feedback from our staff. Um, to think about how we send it out to parents as well. Perfect. Okay. Um, at our annual meeting, the um, the budget will be presented by Brenda, since she's so familiar with the numbers. Um, and But we will answer any questions um, that people have. It's usually the way we do that. Okay. All right. Any other um, discussion regarding the annual me meeting presentation? or communications that we're doing before that. Okay. How, how long does it typically last? Well, it depends on how many people come. Last year we had one person, <laughs> so it was really short. Um, but we hope to have more people come and, and uh, so, 
Because we did not do the pres the board presentation um, because there was only one person there. So it was a relatively short meeting. I think it was, what, 20 minutes? So hopefully it'll be longer. Board member recruitment. Um, any of those of you who needed to rerun for their seat should have already sent um, filed their paperwork. And I don't, I think we have people for every slot, but I'm not sure. I'll have to check with Melinda on that. If you didn't get your paperwork in, then you're running um, as a write-in, so start your campaigns now. <laughs> and of course, anybody in the public who wants to uh, run for a board seat um, and didn't get paperwork in can also do that. They can do a write-in campaign. So, um, elementary, oh, so this is the next, this is a big piece of our talk tonight, is elementary school choice process review. So we currently have school choice, elementary school choice, which is different from high school choice. Um, we allow, as long as there's room, movement between elementary schools for whatever reason a family might have. And um, it's come to our attention that there may be some hiccups in that based on, um, was anyway, I'll let you speak to it, Kristen, if you'd like to. You have better words than I do. So, go for well, it. I don't, I don't know about that, but thank you. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, this is my first year as superintendent, but certainly not my first year in the district. Uh, so I've been sitting on some thinking and feelings about the elementary school choice policy for a while now. Um, now is also a good time to have conversations about it because we had a lot of administrative turnover. So to see what their initial thoughts were on it um, and also what the impacts are um, included in, in your packet, I think, is just a reminder of what the policy really is. And, and the policy is, is just that, um, you know, in February, we reach out to folks and say, hey, you have school choice in, at the elementary level and if you want to access it, here's the application, here's how you go about and do that. Um, they fill out the form, it comes to myself and Melinda, and then in April, uh, we send out letters to folks about school placement and or um, the possibility that they don't get their choice and or the possibility that they are on a, a wait list. And the decision making process for how that happens is um, Melinda and I sit together, we grab all of the OVU elementary principles, and it's basically this, this game of chess. Um, you know, I've got this many kids in this section, I've got this much room in this section. Um, you know, I have this sibling, I have this sort of thing. Um, and it's this, this crazy balancing act um, that happens quite a lot. And again, the, the intent of the policy years ago at the merger um, was a good one, was really important for all of the communities. Um, it allowed for some recognition that some of our schools were different than others and students fit, just fit better into different environments than others. Um, times have changed. We don't still have Whiting and Sudbury the way that we had Whiting and Sudbury. Um, Otter Creek is doing some amazing things, but it isn't a standalone um, PBL project-based program. It's an elementary program that has a pretty heavy thread of project-based learning, um, but it isn't really an expeditionary center the way that Sudbury really was designed to do. So we basically have elementary schools that are pretty darn similar, just different staff, just different sizes, and our parents end up making choices for some really valid um, and important reasons. My oldest kiddo went here and I want my youngest kiddo to go here. And or we live in Pittsburgh and we just moved to Brandon, but we wanna keep our kids in Pittsburgh. Those are all wonderful reasons to reach out and grab choice. But I would tell you that those things happen more often throughout the school year, right, as a rolling sort of thing. All of our parents don't move in February, right? Someone will move in August after this, we've made these decisions, or someone will move in, in October or 
you know, something will happen, a family member, you know, a cousin ends up living with someone. And so those are things that school districts and schools around the state of Vermont balance and work through anyways just to do what's best for kids and families, right? Administrators always make those decisions. If a kid is really struggling in one setting, the principal can always reach out to the superintendent and say, hey, what are our options? So that has nothing to do with the pop elementary school choice policy as it stands. What is happening with the elementary school choice policy, and you do have this in your packet, is a mass exodus. And I say mass because um, one of our schools is super small we end up losing pretty large chunks in some places of our students from OCA to go to Nashville. So for instance, just in one school year, OCA lost 13 students to Nashville, different grade levels, um, different reasons, but a lot of it had to do with pre-K because Nashville's pre-K program is much, much bigger than, than OCA's. And once a student was in pre-K, they're like, hey, the pre-K teacher told me Nesha is better than OCA. Can I just keep my kid here? So we are really struggling to have um, OCAs having a tough time. We want them to have class sizes that meet both the minimum of our policy and don't extend beyond the maximum of our policy. Um, and this kind of puts OCA in some dangerous territory sometimes. Um, it also, sometimes puts, for instance, Nash should be larger than it needs to be, still below the, the maximum. Um, but if we have, because we, this policy exists, say I have five kids that want to leave OCA's kindergarten and it makes OCA's one kindergarten class seven. And it bumps Nash should be's class sizes up to 21. There's a big difference between um, what's happening for seven kindergartners and what's happening for 21 kindergartners. And both make those really challenging for both of our schools. Um, so again, I think that the intent of this policy was spot on. I completely support it. I want to continue supporting this way to flexibly support parents and kids that have a need to, for a variety of reasons, ask to um, go to one school or the other. But I would respectfully ask the board to consider <coughs> the possibility of rescinding this policy um, to support the schools and support administrators um, to really make the, the best decisions for their kids and their families. Okay, so lots of information there. Um, questions, I'm, I'm not gonna ask for a motion. Normally I ask for a motion before we do that, but um, before we do that, I, I think you guys should probably ask some questions. Why, why are kids leaving OCA? Well, there's a variety of reasons. She gave one, one of them is that, you know, if you attend pre-K at at Neshebe, um, and then you're supposed to go to OCA for kindergarten, and you have your teacher saying, oh, you should just stay here, you know, that doesn't help. So that, teachers should not be doing that, number one. Um, I'm guessing on the form, it probably asks for a reason, right? So you have to put something down. Sure, yeah. So, but, but why really? I mean, I could see the logic of that without even a teacher making the recommendation. Just, you know, you've been bringing your kids to Neshebe for pre-K. Maybe they go both years, right? Mm -hmm. Three-year-old, four-year-old. Four, yep. And so then you're in the, the habit. You're, and you're familiar with the school. So you just think, ah, if I can continue bringing them to, you know, they know the kids. They've, they've gotten to know other kids in pre-K and now Stay they're going to be going to... Yeah, so so let's continue with kindergarten. I mean, I could see how there'd be just sort of this, you know, a continuity. Um, so, yeah. You know. There's a comfort level there. So I will tell you, coming from a small school, my kids attended small schools. Um, my oldest went to Sudbury all the way through sixth grade. Um, and that's all we knew. And my kids had attended um, pre-K at Neshebe because um, we couldn't make it to the biting one at the time so they went to Neshebe. Um school choice was not part of that so they had to come back to OCA which or um to Sudbury at the time which was fine um 
I will tell you that when I took advantage of fifth uh, in when my middle child was in fifth grade, I moved her to uh, Neshby because of a, a teacher issue. There, there was just too much of this, and and so I thought maybe this would help. From my perspective, there were so many more opportunities um, at Neshaby. Sometimes that is one of the reasons why kids will move there, because there's not the same opportunity as in a bigger school. Um, I will also say that um, some kids do really, really well in a small school with limited number of kids, um, but I, it was a detriment to my oldest. Um, coming in from a class size of seven, to a class size of 100 um, at, in seventh grade. That was a very hard transition and I'm not sure that she ever really got over it. She's very quiet. Um, but yeah, my other one, different personality, went to Neshebe, fit right in, has no problem here at OV. So that that's just my experience. Speaking to why would some people want not want to go to OCA? Well, I I mean, what's the difference between the preschool programs, too? I mean, I, everyone from that I've ever spoken to in any preschool program loves all of our preschool programs, from Whiting to um, OCA to Caverly, the, even Barstow. So I've never heard anybody say, "Oh, this preschool program is bad." Mm -hmm. So I think they all provide yeah, it pretty I'll, much the same. Yeah, I'll just say the the school choice the. Um, uh, the issues coming out of pre-K into K aren't um, related to a choice of pre-K. Usually when people are in a pre-K, not their hometown, it's like in Neshebe's case, it's usually just because of size, right? Whiting only had so many slots. Neshebe has far more programs. Um, Lothrop ends up taking um, quite a few Whiting students as well. Um, and vice versa there are some kids that are waiting from other sending towns just because parents live heading towards middlebury and that's an easier because pre-k hours are so limited that a lot of the pre-k choices are um, based just on space or uh you know ease of being able to pick up program can i ask a question sure. so how do the families get to their um, receiving school that isn't their home school. Are they transporting or are they being transported? Buses run. Buses run between all these programs? For so the, po the policy says that we can't provide transportation, but we do end up working our darndest to do it. And I believe we have all kids transported this year. And they that's a historical thing. Like they say, you might have to do this, but we try our hardest, and because of OV, we end up having buses running in all different directions. So it generally works to support families. Is school choice voluntary, or is that something that the state? Um, no, it's voluntary. We're um, many other school districts do not have school choice. Middlebury does not. A ACSD does not have school choice between their elementary schools. However. They do have a policy that states that a parent can request a change of school for particular circumstances. Okay. And so there is a procedure for requesting a change of school. And those circumstances must be are, are part of a criteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you looked at that policy, Kristen, uh, at all? To yep, yep. Okay. And, and like I said before, most school districts in Vermont that have a that are a district as opposed to an SU or a standalone have a very similar either administrative memo like an internal document or an external facing policy because it's pretty common something will come up someone moves something happens um so yes that's actually fairly common and I have seen middle areas as well Rutland has one um most districts do Becky I saw your hand up yeah, the only thing that I would say is um, that I know that we let all families know every year, and so if we were going to change that, how would families be aware that it's still a choice, um, you know, under certain circumstances? Because I think there might be families who might not know that it's a choice to pursue 
so just making sure that families would know that and I too like Lori um, actually Whiting and Sudbury started this whole uh, school choice thing in between and I think when you're some kiddos small schools really work well and large schools really work well and when your kid is going to a small school and they're only with a certain amount of kids and it, it becomes a click and maybe your kid doesn't fit in that, it's really tricky. And it gets trickier if the groups get smaller. Yep. So the more kids you drain from that, right. it get, the trickier it is to find peers. Which is, for instance, our OCA this year lost of their kindergartners yeah. um, to Nashville. Nashville's kindergarten sizes are huge right. and OCA should have had a 17 um, student class which is a wonderful size for kindergarten um, and again almost all 10 and this is not a shot of puts parents and all 10 of them might ha have had completely legitimate reasons but of all 10 that were pre-k they were first kids They've never stepped foot in Otter Creek. They don't know that that school building isn't a good fit for their their child. So I don't know if it's a we encourage you to do. You must do a walkthrough. You must have a meeting. Like I don't know, but I think again the unintended consequence here is we end up hurting. Lothrop ends up um, skating through, right? Lothrop is kind of geographically on its own, so they move one or two a year. Um, nothing huge. Um, Lothrop's requests tend to be someone moves in or moves out and still wants to stay or something like that. Um, but both Nashville and OCA are significantly impacted. And uh, I've seen this for four years. Barbara? So if I understand correctly, we're being asked to consider rescinding the policy to allow the superintendent or the administration to make decisions on an individual basis case-by-case -case basis for these mm -hmm. okay. I mean right now they just send a letter out every year and you check off whether or not you want to go somewhere right well I mean, there's a form you're, you're filling out a form yeah. saying where your kid is go, supposed yep. to go where they're where you would like them to go a, a reason if there is one and and then you send that back to the su superintendent and then they do whatever they do so, and I think there was only a couple of kids waitlisted, and that was because otherwise we would have gone over the class size policy or the class size, you know, yeah, the class size policy so that we would not, we'd have too many kids in the classroom. So, um, so uh, the other thing that I would assume is that you're going to grandfather any kids that are already going to those you know, that are already going to Neshebe that are from OCA originally or vice versa, correct? Yes, a hundred percent. And I guess it's not even a, uh, um, I guess to Fernanda's point, it maybe, is, it, it maybe isn't even asking you to rescind the policy, but changing the policy to say, this is not just open choice. Here are the reasons why a parent might reach out to the superintendent of schools and the principal to talk about why a different, right, like something like that. Um, and of course, current students would be grandfathered in. And so if I have an incoming kindergartner and my fourth grader was at Neshebe, I'm likely to ask for my kindergartner to go to Neshebe. That seems fair, right? That's something that I would like to say. Absolutely, your family has clear connections to Neshebe. Um, but something that gives us a little more wiggle room besides just, yup, we haven't hit our maximum, so we can keep taking kids out of OCA and keep putting them in Neshebe. Um, yep. Okay. Yes, definitely. It seems to me that <coughs> Kristen needs to write a policy for us to actually vote on or make a decision on. And well, so policy is what she's, I understand what she's saying, but okay. without it being in writing, isn't that difficult for us to just... So, well, so there's two things that, so what you're asking us is that if we resend the policy that we currently have, then we would ask her to write an admin memo, maybe? Is that what you would, or I, you still need something that parents can look at, so... Um, what if you make the, the selection criteria more difficult? 
Sure. So it's re rewriting the policy, not like completely getting rid of it. Okay. So what you're asking then, Brett? Go ahead. Finish your thought first. Well, okay. So the only thing I was thinking was that what you're asking Kristen to do is that for our first March meeting, we would review uh, an updated or a revised class um, school choice policy that would be more beneficial to the district and to our students. That makes more sense to me than just saying we're going to rescind it and you're going to have nothing. And Kristen seems like what Kristen is saying is that she doesn't want just nothing. She wants some guidelines that she can give to parents, which is fair to say, okay. why are you why are you doing this request? And okay. And she can make a decision like that. All right. The criteria that they have to follow. Sure. Brett? I guess to me this feels like kind of a slippery slope. Like, I, the, the problem doesn't seem like it's the policy to me. It seems like there's another problem that we're not really addressing here. There's got to be, I mean, I, I don't know, a community survey to figure out how people feel about their schools or uh, uh, expanding the preschool program. I don't know what the answer is, right? But it, does, it just feels like the policy is not really the problem. It's sort of like a Band-Aid for the, whatever the real problem is here. So you, what you're trying to say is you think there's a problem with OCA and everybody's leaving to go to, to Neshebe for a reason. I mean whatever that is it may not be a problem with OCA it may be a problem with our preschool program I don't know it, it could be it could be a policy with the rural convenience issue it could and be have nothing too. and have nothing to do with the actual functioning in a building um, and that that seems to be what I've been hearing <laughs> is that people have employment issues child care issues um, that are related to that <laughs> scheduling um, and and if there's some flexibility about where they can have their preschool yeah in terms of a choice well, they'll, make, it, they'll, they'll service, make a choice that's right? going to work for them you know some kind of a so we can understand those issues right because I mean I would hate to say okay we're going to get rid of this policy because too many people are leaving OCA well okay but maybe there's a legitimate reason what is it like yeah um, well, I just wouldn't feel comfortable voting one way or another on that policy because I feel like there's we're not we don't have enough information on what the root cause is so Chris and I have a question for you based on what you said so if let's just say we rescinded the policy and I'm not saying we are <clears throat> but let's say we rescinded the policy and you start getting applications for students from OCA wanting to go to Neshebe and they start telling you it's because of a specific issue. At that point, you you know you do realize that maybe there's something going on there. Do you address it at that? Is that when you go back to Brian at OCA or and say you know the we keep having this issue? Can we figure out what's going on here? Or sure, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think to to Devin's point, um, I'm I'm not saying that you know I, I changed my language I'm not saying rescind it um, but definitely a revision um, that allows some flexibility that isn't our maximum class size like yeah naturally can take 22 and leave Port Otter Creek at seven um, so I, I would like to revise it um, and to your question Lori and even to, to um, Brett's point to be completely honest I think that OCA has had a significant turnaround this year. I think Otter Creek is, has turned back into a phenomenal little school um, under Brian Crane's leadership, and this is not a, a shot at the prior administration, um, but that school has made some big turnarounds. It is a community. They are back to project-based learning, expeditionary learning. Um, they do so many amazing things that many, many Sudbury, Lester, and Whiting families just do not know about because past practice, past like historical things about OCA was that, you know, this is kind of what it is and you, and you don't want your kid there. I know that we have work to do with our pre-K and kindergarten teachers to make sure that they are not having conversations that dissuades parents in one way from another from going to one school. 
Um, but I have to be honest with you, seeing the requests that came in the last two years, less than two out of, say, 13 leaving the um, last year, 11 year, leaving this year, had ever even stepped foot in Otter Creek Academy. So I have a really hard time believing that they were leaving for any um, legitimate reason based upon the school not being good enough or what they, you would have. You would have a really hard time proving to me that that school wasn't a fit if you've never even stepped foot into that school. Sure. So is waiting for a proposed revision going to be timed will the timing be off or is this a time to think about a revision and bring it and just put those requests on hold so we haven't launched the application um, we send out the notice of um, availability of school choice generally in February and then late February early March they turn in their school choice form if they're going to turn in their school choice form. So I could have a revised policy um, back to you all for the next board meeting. Um, and then I think, you know, by the end of February, it would be instead of a notification that school choice exists, um, some sort of language about, you know, here's, here's what your avenues are. And I don't think it should be an application. I think it should be um, some way to have a conversation with your principal and the superintendent about the legitimate reason why one school is a better choice for me. And I know that there are many legitimate reasons to request one um, setting over another um, based on what the, you know, who the student is. Um, like Derek said, the rural setting, profit based learning doesn't work for a ton of kids. The opposite happens, right? Neshaby is huge. That's overwhelming for a lot of students, right? Those are real reasons and I think we want to hear from families, both, both to be able to support their transition into the new school, but also make sure that we are being fair and equitable to our schools. And I worry that right now, the way the policy exists is that parents don't even have to really say, it says optional for if you want to tell me the reason, and people are just like, I went here for pre-K. My neighbor told me this is a better school. And that feels unfair for me. Sure I understand. Stop it, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say getting a, a revision back to us for our next board meeting, you are talking about a March meeting, correct? Or it's, up, it's up to you. I know you don't generally pick them up um, at the second meeting, but I, I can bring it back in the second meeting if you yeah. want. So what's the pleasure of the board? The the issue with waiting until a March meeting is that we don't have a first meeting in March. We wait till March, the second meeting, to actually have our, and we'll be reorganizing that night. So we'll have brand new board members, potentially, that don't know anything about this policy. I think it should be next time. So you want to bring it back to the February, okay. Because so, did Kristen just say that she wants to send this out in February? So, um, I think she would like to be able to send it out by the end of the month right. so if we could have a revision but i just wanted to make sure because our second meetings are normally just presentations i wanted to make sure you were okay with bringing this back okay, okay. okay. can i ask a question about the pre-k because it does show that oca is sending the majority of their kids to um Neshebe for pre-k is that is that kind of that's just kindergarten the if seven? it's a k it, K with no with an asterisk. It should say pre-K, shouldn't it? Yeah, just saying of the seven, four attended pre-K at Neshebe. Pre-K? Or is that just kindergarten? Well, that's for kindergarten, right? But four of them previously went there. Is there a difference between, I guess I'm, for my information, is there a difference between the pre-K at Neshebe and OCA time frame, the amount of time the kids are there um well, the, i mean there's there nashville is a bigger program so nashville ends up taking a good chunk of oca students just because of space limitations at white day okay but it's not a longer they are not there all day they're all there no the same it's all time. 10 hours so what about it? the after school program 
Does Lester, does OCA have an after yes. school program? Yep. Okay, so they have the same yeah. availability to stay longer. Yes, they do. Okay. As Derek had mentioned, the idea that people have jobs and, and, and daycare and that kind of thing, I didn't know if, uh, if Nesha Bees was a longer, they're there longer during the day, so it's easy no. for parents to nope. drop them off. Nope. <coughs> same time. Yeah. I, I didn't even put mine in Nesha Bee at all. Yeah. I had to go to Middlebury <laughs> because it just didn't work with my right. work schedule. And hours wasn't right. enough. Right. right. He had to go all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. All right. So then the plan is to have a revision to um, by Kristen of the school uh, choice process here at our next meeting uh, in February. Okay. All right. Moving on. Our NESU board update. I'm going to give that real quick so that we can move on. Um, you saw that we talked about policies that you saw tonight. Um, and we talked about the superintendent evaluation. So um, that was really the gist of our board meeting. Any questions? Okay. Uh, let's see. We're not going to do that. Uh, superintendent's informational report. Anything you'd like to point out to us? Um, Tyler's there, and Tyler just received a substantial um, wellness grant to support mental health and well-being. Um, we are very excited about that. Tyler, did you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, I can do it uh, quickly. So uh, I put a grant, a proposal in for a 6-7 transition program, so from grade 6 to 7. Um, it's something that Michael and I have been talking about um, wanting to do also for the ninth grade, but what this is focused on is uh, our sixth grade uh, class is doing some team building and community building activities in the spring. Coming up to OV and having almost like a college uh, forum, if you will, where they can come into the uh, auditorium or the gym and see all the activities that the uh, kids can do in, in school, sporting activities, extracurriculars, uh, and then also have teachers there that would uh, showcase classes or electives, that kind of thing. Show them basically the opportunities of the high, of middle and high school. And then um, allowing for students, uh, we plan for two weeks of summer programming for our sixth grade students uh, to be more extracurricular classes, uh, but not really classes, more activities. So you pull all, six, all the sixth graders together in the summer, uh, all the buildings, so they, one, get to know each other. And then also uh, in the first week of programming, we would focus on our sixth grade teachers leading those uh, opportunities, hiking, you know, um, all kinds of things, you know, whatever. But the classes are going to be geared to uh, non-curricular, but classes that uh, maybe a, a passion project of that teacher. Uh, I'm kind of liking this off of Rutland High School's Yes Plan, if you're familiar with that. Um, and then the second week of programming in the uh, summer would be OV staff, middle school staff, so that you bring those sixth graders back into now they're seventh graders. Now they've come into the uh, middle school again doing the same kind of programming with different staff. And then that follows them into their first uh, part of their seventh grade year, advisory, doing, again, more activities. And then we've also planned for a, um, uh, a field trip, if you will, through, and I haven't exactly um, planned all the specifics out yet, but um, we're looking at doing some, uh, maybe a community building activity with uh, the Rutland Rock Gym where they go climbing outside, caving, what have you. Again, all community te team building. So they're coming into uh, OV as a whole, a cohesive whole, and then um, fostering that through. It's a two-year grant. It's $125,000. Uh, and the goal is to then sustain that once the grant ends. I mean, obviously making changes and tweaking as we need to go. But again, uh, we want to make sure that our kids are feeling connected to the school and not just thrown in there and you know, you know, figure it out as you go. We want them coming in as a, as a collective whole. Awesome. Yeah. Will they be introduced to like the guidance counselor staff yes. at all? Because I know my seventh grader just met it, her, his for the first time. And actually some of the programming we're looking at in that second week in the summer will be more geared towards our counseling staff leading those sessions okay, uh, than the teaching staff uh, because they'll have a lot of time with the teaching yep. staff. So yeah, that is a big part of that. Uh, there are um, some surveys that we are required to do part of this activity for the wellness piece of it uh, and hoping to build that comfort level of coming into the uh, middle high school uh, again so there there we do uh, reduce that anxiety and also um, for kids to meet each other because they're coming from different buildings 
Do you have staff commitment for summer work? We haven't yet. Okay. Yeah, we haven't yet. Uh, but again, we just found out we got the grant. I didn't really want to put too much out there with the hopes of saying, oh, we didn't get this grant. Uh, but uh, I'm working with uh, Patrick Binder and then Dan, um, Dan Robb um, as the project coordinators, one from the middle high school, one from the elementary schools. Uh, and then we're going to really start that process. We can actually start funding this uh, or using those funds in the middle of March. So uh, we're going to start meeting here uh, very soon and planning out for what we look what it looks like in the spring. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else, Kristen? Um, yeah. Um, and uh, just this is just uh, something for folks to know. Um, Esser, which we talked about a ton, right? Um, the elementary, secondary, uh, the relief funds for um, COVID-related um, initiatives. The state has published a dashboard so that folks can get statewide information on funds that are available, um, what each of the funds means, what different districts are doing with them, um, and highlights how the agency makes their decisions. Um, so just, we've had some conversations about um, federal funds, what they mean, what they look like, what they can be used for. Um, so that's just a, an, another informational thing if, if folks are interested. Um, I just put in a reminder about closing and delays. Um, one of the least favorite parts of uh, the superintendent's job, I assure you, um, and how we make those decisions and try to always make sure that families know that um, if they feel that uh, the roads aren't safe enough, in their opinion, to either send their students in on the bus or um, to travel on their own. They simply need to reach out to the school and let them know it's a weather-related concern um, and their absence can be, um, will be excused. Um, we have a, a new thing coming up for us at end of tomorrow night and Friday, which is the um, below 20 wind chill that we're looking forward for or forward to. Um, so I will, it's our hope that we can be in school. It's our hope that all of the school buses start up. Um, it's our hope that worst case scenario, we have to do a delay just to get the wind chill up. Um, but just so folks know, we, I will put something out to parents tomorrow, just reminding them legally, we can only send kids out to the bus stop at a certain um, wind chill. Um, so if we're below that, we're gonna have to at least delay and then just also a reminder, um, you know, for students waiting out at the bus stop, even if we're running our buses and schools open, um, bundle up, right? A lot of our kids have a little bit of a wait, so make sure that um, kids are no, safe sir. outside waiting for the bus. Um, <laughs> also the, the, the district calendar, um, the draft is um, attached in the supplemental documents. We got the Stafford regional calendar set as a, as a group of superintendents. Um, it's basically just a shift in, in this year's calendar, so pretty much a, a mirror just shifting for 23-24. Um, so that's um, ready for you all to take a look as well. Um, and then a uh, the superintendent series, uh, we had one last week, Lothrop um, OCA is the next one up. Um, and our RNESU, so OBU uh, BUU in schools was issued from Rotten Herald, again ours in the six week series. It's also up on our website, so if you haven't seen that, that features all of the, the great things happening in, in all of our schools throughout the district. Great. Thank you, Kristen. I and missed your introduction on this week's. <laughs> I think, you, you, know I think you need to introduce them from like now on. I feel you're the only one who said that. Yeah. <laughs> it's always so upbeat. It makes me want to watch the whole I'll thing. I'll do one for next. I'll do one for next week. Uh, <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Kristen based on her reports? Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. So, a couple of um, clerical things. Our next meeting is here Wednesday, February 15th, which is two weeks from tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, also, our annual district meeting will be Wednesday, March 1st, here in the Otter Valley Auditorium, also known as the Theater. Um, we do need to stay for an executive session regarding a student matter. So at this time, I would um, entertain a motion to go into executive session with Kristen, Tyler, and Pat, um, nope, almost said the wrong word. Michael, that guy over there. <laughs> um, 
Uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, and Patrick Biner. Okay, so um, okay. At what time is it? Seven seventeen. Yep. Binder. Binder. Patrick Binder. Sorry. At seven seventeen. Um, and then anybody who's not connected to that, you can leave now. So thank you, thank you for yeah. that. And yeah. oh yeah, Fernanda did. Okay. Fernanda made the motion. And did someone second? I'll second it. Yeah, there we go. If no There's one did, I will.